I will call to order this meeting of the Bloomington Commission on Sustainability. This is our November regular meeting. Today is Tuesday, November 15th, uh, 2022, and it is 6.03 p.m. Will the secretary please call roll? Cena Anderson. Matt Austin. Here. Caitlin Edwards. Present. Matt Clarity. Here. Uh, Anya Jane, David Mayer, Sean Mia, Nishla, uh, Joe, here, Nolan, here, Alicia Hardy, <coughs> I have to say myself. Yes. Uh, Ferguson, here. All right. Thank you for that. We do have a quorum. So we can go ahead and move on to the approval of the agenda, which I will share right now. So everyone can see it. Um, this was distributed by email yesterday, on the 15th. Are there any objections to adopting the agenda as distributed and shown on the screen share? All right, seeing none, that is adopted. And we can go to the approval of the meeting minutes, which we have uh, for the September meeting. We will display those as well. And share. All right, so are there, I know that I have already made comments, but I want to start by seeing if there are any other uh, corrections to the minutes. Uh, seeing none, I will quickly point out just the comments that I made. Uh, uh, roll call, just to have the absent members and also how each member attended, if it's uh, present, uh, in person, first virtual. Uh, another note. Was ERI for the, I guess Environmental Resilience Institute tools. Just a couple of um, uh, punctuation and spelling notes, and then there was under new business uh, a note of forest management slash waste reduction. I was curious about the origin of forest management. And also a note that the numbers in the minutes. Uh, don't follow the numbering of the agenda after point number nine. Okay. And the last point was just a, a matter of the, the language of the motion for the uh, approval of what I think was the annual report draft. I just wanted to make that distinction to see if that was um, that could be made to follow the language of the actual meeting. And I believe this was, um, Dave, the meeting that you- Yeah, I'm checking out. I mean, okay. most of this is straight out of the notes, so that's all I had. Um, okay. But I believe so. I believe you're right. It's not okay. climate action. Plan. Perfect. So if you would be willing to follow through with those changes then, since sure. they were your notes. Yeah. Okay. So if there are no other corrections, then those minutes are approved as corrected. Um, and then we will take a look at the October 11th meeting minutes at our December meeting. So that concludes uh, our first four points, brings us to public comment. So each member of the public will have three minutes to speak. Uh, if you are in the room, you can just raise your hand or if, let's see if there's anyone are there any members of Zoom? Or, I'm sorry, members. Uh, uh, sorry, any members of the public attending on Zoom? You can indicate your desire to comment by using the raise hand function or by typing into the chat. All right. I do not see any takers in the room, or on Zoom, or in chat. So. We'll go on to reports. 
Uh, starting with the report from the acting chair. Um, I will note just uh, somewhat spontaneously, I had a meeting with Sam Armstrong, the chair of the Environmental Commission, just to kind of touch base on our two groups and see sort of where they might be doing overlapping work and where they might not be and how we could maybe better organize if there's, if there's a uh, possibility to. Uh, we found that it's pretty much, we're working in different arenas, so there wasn't a lot of clear, obvious spaces to, to coordinate or collaborate on with the uh, exception of a connection suggestion for the uh, heat mitigation and management working group with the uh, staff liaison to their commission who works in the planning, who serves in the planning commission for the city. Um, the other item that I wanted to note was the report, uh, or sorry, the presentation to council for the annual report, or the, the kind of annual report that covers two years, uh, is scheduled for December 7th at the council regular session. So I will be putting together just a quick, uh, short slide deck to show during the presentation. And we'd just like to ask that if there are any commissioners or working groups that would like to provide updated information or potential work that has been done since our uh, report was adopted, that I could add that for comment if there's anything that you'd like to present to council. But because that presentation will be taking place before our next meeting, if you could just email me that content then I can be sure to include that if desired. What was the name of Sorry? What was the name of the presentation? Oh, the 7th, December 7th. And the, the meeting starts at 6.30 and the materials need to be provided by uh, November 30th, uh, the presentation materials that is. So if you are able to provide those to me before, let's say the end of next week, so by the 25th, then I'll be able to put that into the presentation. So that is all that I have to report. Uh, we can go ahead on to report from our staff base on Jordan. All right. So the first item that I wanted to share today was the report to council. And this was in between our last meeting and this meeting. And I gave a report on progress on the climate action plan and the sustainability action plan. And I will go over at a pretty high level what I covered, but if anyone has any questions, just wanted to say for the benefit of the public that this report can be found at bloomington.in.gov slash sustainability, along with both the climate action plan and the sustainability action plan and previous progress reports. So um, the first section covers basically the plan, the goals of the climate action plan, which is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions an additional 25% by 2030, and just highlights the greenhouse gas emissions sources, which are predominantly from electricity and natural gas, uh, as well as showing what the projected decreases will be absent further action, which would be an additional 9%. And that's generally due to um, less carbon intensive fuel sources on our electricity grid. And then just also things like more efficient construction. Um, I will note that even if you don't want to read more of the detailed actions, there is sort of a progress tracker available. So we've made significantly um, more progress in areas like climate change and adaptation, which include things like 
tracking our emissions, doing strategic planning, um, and quite a bit in building energy use. I know you can't really see this too well, but <laughs> put a zoom in a little bit. Um, and I think that is pretty well in conjunction with how the number of actions in relation to buildings and energy use are reflective of the proportion of our community emissions that are in that area. Um, I will note that this plan was just passed last year. So some of these other areas that don't have as many ongoing or active actions um, are in relation to needing to build new partnerships or have further investment next year in these areas. So um, the basic structure, uh, if you are to go through it is to look at there's both the completed ones just for quick viewing and then ongoing um, and then underway, which means that there has been some progress in that area. So um, I expect that by next year, especially with additional investments in some of these areas, there will be quite a bit to report in 2023. But just wanted to note that um, the recording and the presentation should be available also on CATS if you want to view the full presentation. And if you had any questions about you know, particular aspects of the report, you're welcome to ask me either at this meeting or via email once you have a chance to check out the report. So I we also had a conversation with the Council Climate Action Committee, and we'll have another meeting in November. Um, which anyone is also welcome to attend. So that should be on the city meetings calendar as well. And then the next item on the agenda that I wanted to make sure and cover, um, we've had a lot of questions from the public about the Inflation Reduction Act. And so I just wanted to share this resource, which I feel like has been pretty helpful in terms of like just highlighting what there is on the consumer side. So. If you are a resident of Bloomington and you're interested in some of the rebates or programs that might be available through these federal incentives, this is put out by the NRDC. Um, especially, I wanted to highlight that the solar incentives are continuing for the next 10 years. So even if you're not in a position to invest in solar, maybe next year, this is something that's available in terms of the 30% tax credit moving forward. So I think especially um, given that net metering is rolled back, this is a huge opportunity for Indiana and continuing solar growth for households. Um, there's also a couple of other opportunities that we're still awaiting a, a bit more in terms of details, but there's you know, energy efficient home improvement tax credit, uh, there's an electric vehicle tax credit, so there's a lot of different rebate programs that I think will make a big difference for people that this, these sorts of um, investments in the homes may be out of reach otherwise. So I will share this with you all as well, but um, we're making, trying to make sure that people are aware of this. It may not have been evidence, quite a complicated bill, exactly how that might affect you know, individuals or other people in Bloomington, but. Um, the renewal of things like the EV tax credit, it's $7,500. So that cost difference that you might be experiencing between purchasing a new electric vehicle and um, a gasoline vehicle is less consequential if you're able to pop these credits. So I think we should have any other Yeah. Um, oh, oh. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention is that both Bloomington and Monroe County will be participating in the Environmental Resilience Institute's 2022 Resilience Cohort. And the focus of that will be on um, vulnerability planning. So this will really help on some of the adaptation actions. So we have a vulnerability plan that looks at flooding and heat impacts. And um, we've we know that if we're just trying to focus on city limits, that's going to be less impactful than if we can work with the county to look at a broader scope. This flooding doesn't care if it's in the city limits or in the county. So um, the city will be working in conjunction with the, you know, intern that's placed with the county to work with both county departments and the city to look at a broader, you know, countywide plan for climate vulnerability. So that will be happening between uh, I think it will start in May 
and then go throughout the summer and then hopefully be extended into the rest of 2023. So um, this is something that the city has participated in in the past. We've done uh, our greenhouse gas emissions inventory through ERI. We've had some other interns in the summer to work on projects. And so this is a really great, I think, resource to work with other communities um, through IU and they'll be able to provide a lot of other resources that we wouldn't be able to access otherwise. Um, so looking forward to that and looking forward to keeping you all updated as that moves forward. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Are there any questions on those three points in that report? What does ERI stand for? Environmental Resilience Institute. And then I did have one more thing. Um, there's been a ongoing conversation about our open seat for the IU Office of Sustainability. I was able to talk to Jessica Davis, who's now the interim director of the IU Office of Sustainability and Sustainability U, and she has agreed to um, fill that seat. So next meeting will be her first time in that one. Thank you. Any other questions? I do have one I would like to ask um, in relation to uh, waste, the waste portion of the uh, climate action plan. Sure. Mm -hmm. We can, if there's a quick answer now, we can go through that or I can get you offline. But uh, I saw that the food pilot, or the pilot food scraps bag program was noted as underway. And I was curious about where and how that's taking place. Yeah, so I would say it's not. Uh, I mean, some of the nomenclature in the plan is not exactly what the program is ended up being, but the execution of that from the business perspective has been through the compost up program. So uh, we don't have a residential composting program right now, but that's been the commercial one on that side. So we have um, 16 restaurants participating right now. Excellent. Thank you. There's no question. And if there are no more, I'll say thank you again, Lauren. And we can go on to report from Council ex officio, Matt Flaherty. Matt. Thank you. Yeah, happy to share some updates. Uh, also, that's welcome news, uh, Lauren, about Jessica Davis being willing to fill the seat for a sustained night. That's great. Um, first, just uh, a note that my monthly constituent meeting uh, is on Monday. Uh, third Mondays of the month, so Monday, November 21st this month um, at 5.30 p.m. Uh, via Zoom, and you can find a link to that uh, on the Council's um, calendar, uh, which is on the, the City Council's website. There's a calendar and links on the side. Um, also, uh, we'll briefly just share a professional update because it has some relevance to uh, some of what we were just discussing. Most of you knew um, or know that I worked at the Environmental Resilience Institute at IU, uh, which was just mentioned in the context of the Resilience Cohort. Um, but as of yesterday, uh, I am no longer with the Environmental Resilience Institute. Uh, I've accepted a new position with uh, a nonprofit organization called Clean Energy Works uh, that kind of works on energy efficiency and distributed renewables um, finance and funding. So uh, excited for the new opportunity, but also sad to be leaving ERI and all the work with local governments in Indiana that I got to do in that context. Um, <clears throat> also, just of note, uh, uh, as a replacement for my position and the first of potentially several hires uh, in the coming months at ERI, um, there's a position posted that's Assistant Director for Climate Policy and Implementation right now on IU Jobs. Um, uh, if folks in the commission or members of the public or people in your networks are interested in that position, I believe it will be up until um, Thursday, November 17th at midnight. So feel free to check that out. If you go to IU Jobs, uh, you can just search Environmental Resilience Institute and find that, or feel free to reach out to me to chat about any of that. Um, a few updates on the legislative front. Uh, we have two ordinances this week we're considering at the council that are um, uh, rate increases to uh, the wastewater and stormwater utility. Um, those are sort of phased and periodic, typically once every year or two. Uh, we need some sort of uh, small rate increase to cover uh, rising costs and expenses associated with those utilities. Um, Ordinance 2233 uh, is focused on uh, wastewater treatment, so a variety of efficiency improvements, modernization, upgrades as a Dillman wastewater plant. Um, Ordinance 2234 is focused on stormwater utility uh, and largely is, is funding, um, will fund uh, improvements and, and repairs to the Hidden River culvert system, uh, which many of you know was under construction over the last several years uh, through our downtown. 
as well as improvements to um, the open channel that, that uh, routes Clear Creek uh, through the city. And all of that is aimed at reducing flooding in the downtown area. Of course, we had a fairly catastrophic flood last year uh, when we had a large rain event in June. <coughs> um, another item on our agenda for this Wednesday is uh, Ordinance 2235, which um, uh, is brought by, I believe, Council Members Rollo and Sandberg, though I don't think sponsors were noted in the packet. Um, and it has to do with uh, a change in the process for traffic calming and greenways program. Uh, it raises the threshold for the number of signatures residents have to collect to be able to apply for the program. Uh, it inserts council approval of, of all projects, staff or resident led, um, and a few other sort of related procedural things that um, uh, increase the, the threshold or work need, need to be done to implement uh, greenway projects. Um, and those are generally uh, projects that are aimed at increasing safety for all roadway users, as well as um, uh, trying to encourage and, and um, prioritize uh, non-automotive transportation modes. So if you know like the Allen Street Greenway, for instance, that's a good example, west of Bryant Park, there were some changes to that street, first temporary and then permanent over the last five years or so they really make it a uh, pedestrian and bicycle priority street. Uh, so yeah, some proposed changes from some of my colleagues to that ordinance, I'm sorry, to that process. Uh, so feel free to check that out as well in our council packet. I think those are the things with the most direct uh, sort of sustainability nexus. Uh, happy to answer questions though. And, and yeah, that's it for me. Thank you, Matt. Any questions on that report? All right, seeing none, I would like to ask one, um, just out of curiosity, is there a description in the uh, packet for Ordinance 2235, the change to the Greenway requirements as to the motivation of those changes? Uh, yeah, so there's a staff memo, or a yeah, council staff memo, and I think the, the whereas clauses um, and synopsis of the ordinance itself sort of lay out the... Um, uh, the rationale of the sponsors, um, and 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 then yeah. So so I think uh, the presentations themselves uh, from from the sponsors will be a uh, a more comprehensive way to hear their their views about uh, this change, a proposed change. But you can definitely get a, a, a some sense of it from from the legislation itself. Thank you. All right. Seeing no other questions, we go on to reports from commissioners, uh, starting with the working groups and starting with just transition, if you would, Major. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, we weren't able to have a meeting, but uh, we did have a discussion um, and we decided to uh, slightly um, alter the focus of the uh, working group and um, so I'm planning to come back to the commission at our next meeting and uh, maybe give a small presentation and, uh, and introduce that. It, it, the change is mostly based on that we noticed that there are other organizations in our community doing a lot of community outreach and data uh, gathering in these same areas of uh, social equity and economic sustainability. And so we decided it might be more um, effective for us to focus more on how we can add value to that process besides duplicating that first. Any questions from commissioners? Just to verify, did you say that you wanted to present on that? At the next meeting? Yeah, okay. would that be okay? Yes, just wanted to know if we're adding to the agenda. Sure. Okay. Yes. Um, all right, and then Sean, if you would, for the people in the group. Sure. Um, so at our last meeting, uh, a member from the uh, Monroe County Health Department provided some data from uh, the Monroe Hospital. Um, so this was data um, collected uh, for emergency department visits uh, related to heat-related illnesses. And so the data showed that we have people going to the hospital um, with ages that range between 20, so it's 20 all the way up into their 80s. And so we're trying to get more data from the IU hospital um, 
So the more data that we have, the better um, we can use that information to uh, apply for grants, um, put it in our educational materials. Um, so giving an idea of what's actually happening in Bloomington um, in regards to heat. Uh, so our next plan of action is to look at all of the city and county plans and see what's already been written in them um, in regards to heat, uh, what's being done now in the city and uh, county, and then what's been proposed to happen in the future. So we, we don't want to duplicate work that's already being done, um, and we don't want to step on anybody's toes. So, um, so that's our next plan of action. We're going to uh, make a spreadsheet with all of the different plans and then assign the plans to each person and we'll go through and, and um, just do a real deep dive in each of those plans. Um, we talked about creating uh, extreme heat education materials for next year's fair, um, have something to hand out to people and explain um, what their risks are and who's the most vulnerable and how they can protect themselves. Um, I'm going to start researching some funding opportunities um, there's a lot of different grants out there, and so uh, we want to see uh, what would be the best fit for what we want to do. Um, I've reached out to Dr. Dana Habib, um, who's in the School of Informatics, who I worked with um, for the past year. Um, we want her to present on uh, what she's learned from, uh, she was the uh, coordinator for the BP programs in Richmond and Clarksville. And so we just want to learn from her what worked and what didn't work and um, how to move forward with, our, with what we're going to do. And then also um, how we can partner with CAPA strategies uh, to create an urban heat island map, um, such as they did in Richmond and Clarkston. So um, we've got a lot going on. Uh, is there anything else? Um, no, I think that covered everything. So everybody's really motivated and um, there's a lot of great input and effort being done. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. One question. Um, are there any efforts to, in, in addition, take into account animal welfare? I haven't really thought about that. In addition to human welfare? Um, we haven't really thought about that, but I think that's a good Yeah, that's a good no, I know there's a lot of outdoor animals. Other questions? All right. That will bring us to the waste reduction working group. Either Matt or Emma, do you have any? I'll, I'll start and then she can finish. Sounds great to you. Um, so, as for the Carbon Council, we got a hold of them and um, they contacted the current uh, contractor for the city only to find out that the current contractor does not recycle carbons. So, the option would be to find out what is the next. Uh, when does the contract that the city has with them uh, expire and to find a potential uh, option to replace them that does have, that does offer carbon recycling. So it's kind of a downer, but it is what it is, we're going to move forward. And then we started to create a, uh, an outline for the compost captains, and I'll let Emma take it from there. Um, yeah, so we put together an outline for our, our compost captains plan on how to implement that. Um, the end goal, not for this year, but would be to present to the council. That's not the goal for this year, but that's our end goal with it. And um, yeah, is that it? I think so. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you both. Are there any questions? All right, that covers all of our working group reports. I did just want to make a request to check in. We had spoke at our last meeting about opportunities for connecting um, our networks or our groups uh, with the Zero and Bloomington program. There were just a few commissioners present who had mentioned that they had other places or social places where they're going to just make plugs or put out information. Just want to check in to see if anybody wanted to report on if they were able to do that, if there was any success in doing so. I put flyers up at my office. Nice. And one person did ask me about what it was. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, who else said that they had places to do so? So, Lacey oh, um, Lingbart reported to uh, the Rotary um, Sunrise Rotary Club. Oh, okay. Um, she brought up to that group, and they are looking for ways that they can contribute and help uh, 
that were awarded. And also, <clears throat> I'm going to steal this from her. Um, she also brought the idea to have a um, sort of a competition between rotary clubs um, just to, to get the program yeah. a, a try and um, basically just spread it out among the other rotary clubs uh, in the area. So uh, she, she's doing a lot of good work on spreading that word. Uh, mm -hmm. Just didn't want it to go unreported. So. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. That's speaking on our behalf, I guess. Yeah, great news. Thank you. Thank you both for that. All right. Sorry, I was just going to. Oh, yes, please go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey. Sorry, I had my uh, hand raised, but I don't know if that was doable for those who are in person. Um, so, uh, the medical student, uh, the medical school, the IU School of Medicine, which is the state uh, medical school with nine campuses across uh, the state. Here on the flagship campus, um, where I'm a director, these students have created a statewide student interest group focused on sustainability. Um, as you can imagine, as a medical student who travels a lot, rents a lot, um, you know, you have a high demand schedule, they're still refining um, what their focus is going to be in this sustainability student interest group, but it is kind of a statewide effort. Um, and I've encouraged them to start by thinking locally here with Bloomington. And I shared the resources for renters that's on the Zero Bloomington page. Um, and I think that's gonna be the most relevant to them um, that I've seen on the Zero Bloomington page myself. Uh, but uh, since <laughs> Lauren's here, if there's anything else that would be relevant to students or any further resources, let me know because that's a definitely a motivated group of amazing, very type A students who are really um, expressing an interest, especially in health and sustainability. So um, that's just something that I want to throw out there. So working on some custom resources for campus too, because that, that can be- Yeah, I think perfect. so. I think the, the, the sustainability options on Zero, Zero Bloomington site that is for renters is a little bit more limited, obviously, because you you can't really change the infrastructure if you're in a rental situation. So if there was anything, you know, anything else they were you were going to roll out with the program that was more relevant to, you know, living on campus um, or you know living a high a high travel or high demand um, kind of lifestyle where you might be living in different cities, you know, to go on rotations. I'm not sure how much uh, everyone knows about medical education, but um, you uh, are required to travel quite a bit. So they're thinking about, you know, some of those things and, and the efforts that they, you know, that they can do to think sustainably about sustainability and health. So, and now that we're finding microplastics, you know, in um, umbilical cords and things, it's definitely something that's of interest to them as, you know, wanting to be the next generation of doctors. So I just want to throw that out there. I plug Zero Bloomings into them. But uh, I guess as a part two to that, if there's any other resources for renters, um, I'd love to be involved there so I can make sure to share it with my demographic. Terrific. Thank you, Caitlin. And I apologize again for missing your hand. I updated my display so I can see it now. Um, all right. Any other thoughts on the subject before we proceed? All right. Very good. That concludes all of our reports then and brings us to our discussions. Uh, there's only one item on the agenda, and that is one that I uh, had added, and it is a proposal to have an Earth Keepers presentation at an upcoming meeting because their services and their activities and their participation with the city actually have come up numerous times over the last six months of meetings probably, so I thought it would be a potentially valuable opportunity if they were available and interested to speak um, for, I, I don't know, we could discuss the duration, but to at least give, give a presentation on their activities and their methods and provide an opportunity for an exchange. So I just wanted to check in with commissioner input to see if that was something that is generally desired before making a request. I think it's a good idea. Is there any, I guess maybe a good start, is, is there any opposition or any other particular thoughts? All right, 
then I will make that request uh, following this meeting and then get back in touch about uh, scheduling. Are there any considerations for time or meeting for, uh, for our uh, members who are present, the duration of the presentation or when it would take place? Maybe 15 minutes or five. Reasonable. We can also check in with them too to see what they have in mind and then uh, close it once we have a, a scheduled date or a, a scheduled opportunity. All right, that was all for that item. Thank you for your input. And we can go on to resolutions for first reading. I will also add to the screen share the resolution that was provided in the packet. And so I think, Dave, if you want to introduce this one as the author. Uh, sure. Um, this is the uh, adoption of the UN's 17 SDGs, as we've discussed several times before. Uh, this is my first pass at a formal resolution, so if I uh, second notes or input, please don't hesitate. I uh, kept it pretty open, um, just given what we discussed before. Um, do let me actually read it, or uh, everybody can see that. Um. Let's do actually. Okay. That is a resolution for first reading. Let's, let's go ahead and read it. All right. Well, resolution uh, number to be determined. A uh, resolution of the Bloomington Commission on Sustainability, because to adopt the United Nations 17 Sustainable, Develop Sustainable Development Goals, hereforth referred to as SDGs, and use them as a framework for categorizing controlling commission projects. Whereas all projects, must align with at least one, but no more than three SDG focus areas to facilitate the controlling project scope and identifying primary, secondary, and collateral outcomes. Any questions on that one? Well, the project scope, is that referring to the working groups or anything else? Project scope is all the components that um, are within that project. So action items, um, stakeholders, if, if there's, uh, I just mean, how, how would you define a project? Uh, a temporary endeavor and which a specific outcome. Um, so not produce. necessarily a working group, maybe a project within a working group or? Um, the working group would be having projects. Um, if they're similar projects, it would be a program. So a working group could, could be running a program of several different projects, uh, but the projects themselves should identify with the uh, SDGs. So whatever, if it's going to be uh, heat management, um, and you know, that could go into um, um, poverty, or it could go into health um, and wellness. It could really spread across several different things, but one of them should be indicated as the primary. Um, having a secondary helps to uh, identify with other projects that may overlap, and the collateral is really just recognizing that it's going to have an impact on other things, but that is not the primary driver for that, uh, for that project. So really it just helps it from getting too, getting too big mm -hmm. um, or spread out across too many things. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, and I remember discussing it and, and agreed with that. I just wasn't sure what project denoted because I don't, I don't know if we normally use that term necessarily. Scope. No project. Uh, uh, yeah. No project is anything. It's, uh, any temporary endeavor that's uh -huh. um, got a specific problem. Um, next one whereas SDG icons, identifiers will be used to communicate project focuses to partners and third parties. This is what we discussed before the icons that they use. Uh, other companies use them, other organizations are familiar with them. So uh, we can help us in communicating our. Intentions. Uh, whereas any projects that cannot be categorized in the SDGs must be reviewed by commissioners to assess if the project falls within the purview of sustainability. Sustainability is a vastly inclusive uh, concept in, in general. So I don't think that would be a problem. However, um, I wanted to leave that open just in case um, we run into a, an oddball that really 
wouldn't bother our, our uh, intents. Whereas projects that can, cannot identify the primary outcome or focus will be reviewed by the commission to determine if the project should be split into multiple projects or if the specific objectives should be prioritized. Um, that really goes along with the first whereas, because um, if we should find that there are too many primary objectives or um, it's, the scope's out of control, then we should probably take a look at it and see if maybe it should be split into another working group or uh, should be divided among other parties. And now, therefore, let it be resolved, but therefore be it resolved that the Bloomington Commission on Sustainability adopt the SDGs as the sole model for project identification and categorization for all sustainability projects moving forward. I just have a question about saying the sole model, because I know we use like climate action plan categories and sustainable action plan categories, mm -hmm. and then I think take precedence for the purpose of this commission and city commission. But I, don't, I don't know if that even is the same thing as the SDGs. The so that was something you brought up before, mm -hmm. with the, uh... Yeah, I actually did some analysis on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, they are, you know, all of the city goals are included in the SDGs, mm -hmm. but the SDGs are a lot more broad. And actually, the scope of our commission is also a lot more broad than the city's goals, the city's sustainability yeah. department goals. I guess my question is, so, is trying to worry about saying the school model, what, what that means or what us. Well, so that, um, I think that should be the I, objective. I think actually the SDGs align more with our commissions. I, in my opinion, the SDGs align better with our commission's scope under our commission's charter than the city goals. But I mean, that's a matter for us to discuss if, if that's, you know. Also then we are an independent entity from the city. Um, we can have it as our own one and then align our projects through the UN's SDGs. Um, without excluding that the city's contributing, we just wouldn't have to follow their model. Uh, we would use their projects to follow our model. Maybe use the primary model instead of the sole model. Okay. Just mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, that works. Yeah, basically, what, what my analysis found was that, like, the U, focusing on the UN SDGs will allow our commission to make up for some of the areas that the city's work is not focusing on. Yeah. And since that's the SDGs are global, they kind of they take hierarchy of the city as far as sustainability as a concept. Right. Um, so really, I mean, it, 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 the city might end up. Yeah, I guess my thought was just that kind of the state and soul model kind of excludes yeah. anything in the city. Not, not that they're not inclusive mm -hmm. agenda, but I'm worried about that. No, I think you're right. Primary is a better word. I do have a different note that I would like to make. I had made the remark, I think at the preceding meeting or two, but the, the general layout of the resolution itself, uh, everything is listed as a whereas. I think generally the whereas is to introduce the motivation for the changes. So I, I think I maybe sent an example of this in, in a separate direct message. I can't recall, so I'll check. But in general, there can also be more than one resolved point. So the resolved lines are the things that we're actually going to do. So presently, everything that's listed as a whereas is, is I think more accurately a resolved and the whereas would be more to the effect of why we want to use these as our as our, our primary model. So- I followed a uh, template online for doing this. <laughs> really? Yeah. So um, they just said basically it's these, whereas for everything that the, the resolution would do. Um, because if you make the resolution, then all the effects go on the whereas. Precisely the opposite of all of these. Exactly. It's exactly. you know, funny. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I don't care. The whereas is it's <laughs> right. okay. So we can change it. What's your word on the change? 
So the result, so it would be what, what I've seen in, in the other examples that I've always referenced is, um, and I think as, as Matt Clary had mentioned or two about the ordinance before um, council, the whereas sets up, it would be whereas using the UN SDGs provides an advantage for visibility of um, SPICOS activities for external parties. Whereas uh, the SDGs can re refine the scope and precision of the projects, um, whereas the SDGs can limit scope creep. Now, therefore, be it resolved, and then we list what we resolve to do to, I guess, following all of those whereas is explaining why we're doing this. That's, that's, that is absolutely yeah, so this was supposed to be uh, whereas for directives rather than the outcomes. And you're saying the whereas for the outcomes rather than the directives. Interesting. Okay. So uh, you know, we'll uh, gather rock, paper, scissors, or <laughs> we'll prepare our templates later. Okay. Or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm curious. Do you happen to know off the top of your head the source that you use for your time? I, I can find it. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. Actually, I know it's fine, or um, if I may call on. Council Member Flaherty, yes. who has been parliamentary, yes. who I cannot see on my display while I'm sharing screen, so I don't know what your reaction is, but do you have anything to weigh in on that? Sorry, I lost just the last 30 seconds or so, but on the point of what should be characterized as a whereas clause versus a, a resolve point? Correct, or yeah, we'll see if you have a stance on if it's um, adequate as it is, or if it should be restructured with whereas it's introducing the motivation and the therefore is uh, what is currently whereas. Yeah, my suggestion would have been in line with uh, yours, uh, Joseph, um, in terms of sort of describing reasoning versus um, what will or shall be done. Um, but I, I don't know if it matters all that much. Uh. Okay. Thank you for your input. Um, any other commissioner thoughts on that point in particular? Okay. Any other input on the content in general? I just have a question. So I agree that um, we should be using the SDGs. I'm just wondering, um, so how do we incorporate that into our work? Do whenever we propose something, we say in alignment with SDG 8 or whatever, you know? Health and well being, we are proposing to do X, Y, and Z. I'm just wondering how we're going to utilize this in our work. I just envision it as whenever you're uh, approaching a project, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be all that. Uh, you can align the, the SDGs to your project rather than the project of the SDGs. Um, just whatever you want to do, and then you find out what the primary outcome aligns to. And the secondary outcome, and then any collateral. Uh, it's not really that prescriptive to the SDG specifically. It's more the SDGs are a tool for you to use for your project. Yeah. So, um, when you list out a project, you say it aligns with these groups. Yeah. I think a good example that comes to my mind is as we were working through the annual report and doing oh. end of 2022 planning, we were setting up like the waste reduction working group had three specific objectives for the end of the year. So I think those would count as the definition of projects. And then those, as we even already started to do in our report, we just said this project corresponds with this SDG. Okay. So I don't think that we necessarily need to go a lot further than that. So, so more so just in reporting and in planning, okay. just saying what, what the alignments are. Okay. And communication. So that if you pull in other third parties, um, that way that any materials are given to them, they can just identify easily by the icons or the associated thing. Okay. All right, all right, Commissioner. Um, the very last, can I be heard? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, sorry. I was hearing some weird feedback. Um, in the very last section, be it resolved, um, it's the first time in the resolution where it mentions that the SDGs would be for project identification. Um, and actually, uh, I think it's more to do with project uh, definition and scope rather than identifying the project. So I think categorization makes a lot of sense, but I, I don't know about project identification. 
because to me, the most the most effective part of this resolution is that it's a tool that can be used to narrow the scope. Sustainability is so far reaching. Once you get so excited about a project, it can go, you know, <laughs> everywhere. And so this is a great tool to just focus in and say, all right, if we want this to go everywhere, we need to break it into smaller chunks. Um, and what part of the project, you know, can we break down into being just addressing one SDG, you know, with, of course, a primary SDG and then the secondary and collateral. Does that make sense? So I guess, especially because uh, the first whereas kind of uh, implies to me that the SDGs are what we're using to identify, or the problems are, the project is what we're using to identify the SG, SDGs, not vice versa. Does that make sense? So the first whereas kind of is implying that the, that it's, you know, and then the very last one seems like it's flipping them to me. So I, I don't know, maybe I project go identification. The and then go, it's not that we're going to go, what project should we do? Let's look at the SDGs and decide. I see. Is what she's saying. Yeah, and, yeah, exactly. So it's limited, yeah. You feel it's I just think, I just think if you change the one identification to a word that's a little bit more, you know, specific, then it would it would hit at that. But yeah, everything else sounds great. Identification in the therefore. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. No, what 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 do you just you just want to take it out and use categorization? Maybe replace it with scope. Well I thought uh, yeah maybe I uh, as far as the identification that was more for the uh, communication aspect of it. So if you were talking to other people, um, you can identify what projects had that fall under the SDGs. Uh, it's not us identifying our projects, but other people identifying our projects. Or if we were going to be doing an assessment at the end of the year and see how many projects in what areas we were mm -hmm. um, That was like categorization, right? right? You think? So you just want to take out identification? It's more, I think it's more to do with defining the scope of the project. And then the SDGs help us translate that scope to uh, our stakeholders who might not have a full understanding of, you know, all the SDGs or all the minutia of what each project entails. So I think it's it's your resolution. It's great. I'm in support of it. That was just one area. Um, so if removing identification works for you, I also uh, just put in the chat um, maybe definition, like the project. It's more a defining tool, like how are we defining this project um, and what are we using? What SDGs are we going to use to define the project? The outcome, that's the desired outcome of the project. Um, so in either case. I don't want to uh, steal your baby. <laughs> no, that's good feedback. Um, yeah, I think I think that's good. Good comment. Well, we can take out identification. Um, I think I don't want to confuse scope with objective. Um, scope is what's all involved within a project, um, but the the objective itself is, is really what aligns with SDGs. It's, that's what uh, the outcomes are going to align with. So I think we should keep scope where it is, and, um, but we can take out identification and leave it as categorization. Is that we have objectives somewhere too. Mm -hmm. It's not there. I, I think I used focus. Oh, it's a focus. Yeah, project focuses. Is that what you mean? Is that objective? Yeah. Objectives. Last whereas specific objectives should be prioritized. Oh, yeah. Try not to be redundant language, but it's <laughs> sorry because all the terms are very specific. I think I will also note in the first whereas it wasn't immediately clear to me until you explained it when you were after you had read it that the 
at least one, but no more than three, are then defined as primary, secondary, and collateral outcomes. Yes. Was that immediately clear to everyone else? Although the collateral, I mean, there could be multiple collateral incomes, uh, outcomes, but if you were going to list one as a collateral, we should list it to just three instead of saying you can affect everything. Okay. So my, my um, interest or the, the point of the comments is to see if there is sufficient clarity or a need for additional clarity in that there will be no, at least one, but no more than three, and that those three will be categorized, or those three will be assigned primary, secondary, or collateral status. So they're not, they, they will essentially always be hierarchical, right? Yes. There will always be a prioritization of all three. You can't just say this applies to these three and they're all the same. Right. Because I didn't, I didn't understand, I didn't have that understanding until after you described that that's how they would be applied. Right. So what I'm curious is, am I the only one who lacked that, in which case it might be adequate as it is, or is there a general sense that that wasn't clear, immediately clear to everyone else, in which case it would be beneficial to have a change to the language. That the focus areas should align one-to-one -one with the outcomes. No, just that there, there has to be a primary, secondary, and bilateral status of the, of the three. I wouldn't say there has to be. Oh, okay. It's one, but no more than three. So if, if you only have a single objective or primary focus um, for your project, you can have just one. Right. Um, but you don't have to list a secondary one. But, but if you do have two, it would have to be a primary and a secondary. Is that understanding correct? I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't think I want to say that because if you did do a project that you felt was addressing two things equally, um, I would be, I would say that those, you could say that those are both primary objectives okay. without um, having a secondary impact. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. But then that brings to my mind the question of uh, the application of primary and secondary collateral associations. So maybe, let's see. Does it, it makes sense that- Or, so if, if I just, if we change it from and to or, primary, secondary, or collateral outcomes. Do you, do you, does, or do we desire for every- um, I, I don't want to rank our objectives if we're communicating these to other people as well, because they want to be involved in something. I think they want to focus on one aspect of it and not the other, but they are being equally addressed. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to set some, the, the measurement of outcome might be subjective. Um, but if we're going to be pulling in third parties that have very specific Priorities. I don't feel like they're we're setting the priority for their involvement in the project. So, in general, would it be as required or essential to have a primary, secondary, or collateral association to each focus area, or is that optional? I think that's optional. Okay. Just as long as you have one, no more than three. Okay. Could we phrase it to the effect then of something like would be with the option to assign primary, secondary, or collateral outcomes status? Yeah. yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Okay. In addition. What was that? With the option of assigning instead of identifying. Excellent. Thank you for your feedback, Caitlin. Um, other thoughts? Okay. Uh, since this is a first reading, I don't believe we will have anything to vote on. I don't believe we need to make any due pass recommendations. I think we can just take the edits 
and introduce those into the second reading, uh, which would take place at our December meeting. Um, I think that will be sufficient for concluding that agenda item. I will then toggle back to our agenda and open the Zoom screen up. And that brings us to, I guess, our 12th item, which is new business, if there is any that hasn't already been proposed for discussion. Okay, take another look at Zoom in the chat. Okay. Oh, sorry, I do have one question. Mm -hmm. Did anybody, um, did anybody assess their projects for manpower needs, uh, potential manpower needs or um, help from, from other groups? As I mentioned before, I'm speaking to different student groups, trying to uh, recruit interested parties to help us with our projects. Um, so once again, if you can assess how much help you could use and how many hours approximately um, you can do something, uh, especially if you're going for a specific um, function or um, really, I mean, whatever your projects are calling for. I just, uh, if I'm going to be speaking to these student groups or uh, faculty or anything to, to get support, I want to be able to go in with a very specific um, scope of work. Uh, so, but yeah, if you haven't already, Please pick it over. Let me know how many people and how much time. And uh, I'll be very open. Thank you. Uh, which years of students are the undergrads, graduates, and which schools or subjects? I am not study? discriminating. Uh, as long as they have a, a focus on uh, project management, sustainability, environmental uh, efforts, really. Uh, it's, it's, it's a program to bring in people that uh, want to advance their project careers. So as to get them hours and experience uh, on projects, specifically sustainability and environmental projects, uh, as they can use it later on for certifications and experience. So particularly project management, particularly project management focus, um, that is ones that will benefit most from it because you have to have a certain number. You have to have uh, three years of project experience to get project certification. Um, so that's that's really the foundation of the program I'm trying to launch. Um, but yeah, if, uh, hopefully can can find some very motivated and talented project managers to to help. Get these things moving. I appreciate you bringing that up. I had intended to mention that as well, and it didn't make it into my notes. So no I had oh, didn't mention it at our last waste reduction working group meeting. Did send out an email today, but we didn't get to include anything. Uh, what I think comes to mind now as a, a good question to ask is before even thinking about how many hours we could use and, and what they would be doing. The description that you gave led me to wonder what types of support would we be able to expect? Are these people who are going to like want to engage for like five hours a week and like follow through for a period, or will this be a more ad hoc, um, like volunteerism, just sort of at their leisure type of participation? Like if we were to plan projects around or think of plans that could potentially benefit from this, how how much? and how regular of support should we expect to consider? So that remains to be seen. However, okay. um, it would help me if, if I have a model for what is needed okay. to be able to put it out there to see who may have the skills um, and the availability to, to participate. Um, for example, we were talking about social media uh, management for our things. If I bring it up and we need social media um, say marketers, uh, somebody might have that skill set that I'm not going to be aware of unless I directly ask for it. Um, so I wanted to know what you guys need specifically so I can ask for it directly. It might be helpful to try to scope things around. I mean, the estimate of 
especially those questions about five hours a month, give or take, how much of a bunch you invest in it. So maybe something since you're not compensating the students, I think would be reasonable to say if you have five hours of extra assistance from one person, what would that look like? Okay. And then maybe see a little bit over, yeah. That's actually exactly the number that I was going to suggest. I didn't get to consult with my fellow commissioners in the working group, but that was something I'd imagine just sort of based on the projects that we have and the work that we have done over the last few months, that uh, a single person at five hours a month, I think would be reasonable. Um, I, I don't know how to define the scope or skill set that would be needed. Do either of you have any thoughts? Or anyone have any thoughts with, with, for their working groups that could be valuable to produce now? I mean, this we could mention this at our last meeting, and we have some time available in this meeting to actually have that discussion now. If anybody has any particular thoughts in mind for contributing, yeah, I, mean, I think it makes sense to just give a general um, number five hours makes sense, and you can say four to eight hours a month, five to ten hours potentially a month, it could be less, it could be in that range, but at least that gives. Good idea. I think that's good for, for the general volunteers. But that's why I wanted to, to know if you guys had specific needs, um, specific abilities that I can reach out for. So, you know, maybe somebody's willing to commit 20 hours to a social media project, but then that's it um, yeah, in one month. So, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not trying to recruit general volunteers per se. I wanted. I really wanted to, to attempt to find specific functions for them within everybody's individual projects. So as you assess your projects for what you need, um, I want to be able to take that to students and say, "Well, uh, is anybody able to do this, or uh, going to commit the time to complete this objective?" Okay. So for us, so for our working group, what's management be correct if I'm wrong? Graphic design. For certain signs that we consider to have made for um, recycling centers. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what that I'm Somebody that's specific skilled in physio and yeah. yeah, exactly. I think we might better know like at the beginning of next year because we're kind of back in it like yeah. this end and of the year. So that's why we don't we're not we just tell me. Uh oh, that's 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 <laughs> perfectly fine. Uh, this is more of a, a um, an information gathering exercise. Um, if I can find people that to figure specific needs this soon in the process, that's great. But my program won't be really fully functional until next year. Um, I'm still looking at four months. I think I said that last month. So, questions for that? <laughs> 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 somebody do that research. So that's what I was thinking, like design and research, but I guess I was not understanding how that ties in the project management. Well, everything can be a project, it ends. Yeah. <laughs> so um, really, th that's that's a perfect example. Plus, we may be able to provide um, both undergrad and graduate students with projects that they need, that they can use for their own programs. You know, um, I don't know, it's been a while since uh, so I had to do a project for school. However, if they had, uh, you know, we can provide them with ideas and maybe we can do two birds and one stone kind of scenario where uh, maybe they have a, an assignment to complete an uh, environment objective. We walk in the door and go there. I think right now, we're pretty early in, in trying to discover what we're wanting to do and yeah. like figuring out our scope. But I, I do right see. Now. I do see a need in the future, um, especially for some outreach programs and materials um, and writing education materials and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, just, it's more of a keep it in mind kind of thing. Yeah. I didn't know if anybody, I mean, it's all come up um, since we brought it up, but if you have ideas, please bring it up. Yeah, I think we're marching towards that, that goal. Okay. Well, when you get there, I mean, you, yeah, uh, I think the project manager. People need help creating a work breakdown structure for each of the projects listed trades on here. That will help you identify what needs to be done by doing figuring out those gaps and skills, and then you can take those to the 
Retract my previous statement. I will say instead that if, when planning in your working groups in the next couple of months, you have a specific need, you can reach out with those. Dave, I'll bring that up at our next meeting. Cool. All right. Thank you all for that. Um, any other items of new business? All right. Seeing none, that brings us to our final item on the agenda, which is adjournment. So if there's no objection, this meeting is adjourned. And I see none, so we are adjourned. Well, thank you, everybody.